That's right, your eyes are not deceiving you. This is in fact Danny B and I am back for an all new Danny B Needs a Minute. Back in its original format, it was in 2019, where we opened up the show for a little monologue for me, my logo, the happy, you know, music and all. We're back, and I am happy to get back to this type of content. If you guys don't know, I have a full-time profession where I am a YouTube channel manager and editor for a very popular YouTube channel that has recently hit over 800,000 subscribers. So I do stay very busy handling content for that channel as well as more content for the brand that I work for. So it is hard for me to focus on my own stuff. I unfortunately don't get as much time as I'd like to to sit down and come up with new videos like the Rise and Falls and the other series that you guys have grown to love on this channel. Would love to, you know, get a few of those out every now and again to you guys, but we're back to this type of content. This used to be pretty easy content for me to make, and I kind of miss it. Back in 2019, we were doing these very consistently. You guys were enjoying it. Numbers were good on the view counts, and overall, things went very well with that. And then 2020 happened. I got away from it. You know, things got bad for everyone, and I've tried to bring back Danny B Needs a Minute in new ways, you know, being on camera for you guys, but... Overall, I just wasn't happy doing that. I missed this style of Danny B Needs a Minute, and we're going to get into it and just give you guys, you know, some of the NASCAR news stories that are happening over the off season, and especially as we get into next season, and just do it from a quick standpoint, because, you know, this is Danny B Needs a Minute. So, with that being said, hi, I'm Danny B. Let's get right into it. Okay, so to start things off, we actually have a little bit more somber news to share with you guys, and I hate to share this, but it is important for a lot of you guys to notice if you are well aware of the famous NASCAR broadcaster and motorsports broadcaster, Ken Squire, because unfortunately, he's not in good condition. This comes from a Twitter thread posted by MRN's Dave Moody, so I want to share word for word what Dave had to say. Mixed emotions after spending an amazing day at the New England Racing Museum honoring my friend, mentor, and former boss, Ken Squire. Shared some great stories of co-honorees Mike Joy, Dr. Dick Bergeron, Jack Arut, and MC Alan Bestwick. With a sold-out crowd of race fans, hang on every word. Unfortunately, Ken was unable to attend, and his family has asked that I share with you all that he is almost certainly in his final days. The last three years or so have been extremely difficult, with a series of health challenges that included a nasty case of shingles, a near-fatal bout of COVID, a minor stroke, and a real recent fall that left him with a fractured pelvis. Amazingly, he seemed well on his way to rebounding yet again until another medical issue this week proved too much for even Kenley to overcome. Today's gathering at the New England Racing Museum was a Squire love fest from beginning to end, and while he would have pretended to hate every minute of the praise, love, and attention, I sure wish he could have been there to hear it. Ken's family has been through an awful lot in the last few months, but they continue to handle things with the amazing strength and courage. The coming days will be no different. If you're the praying type, feel free to offer up a few words for this amazing man. Indeed, very sad news to hear about Ken Squire. He is a legend in motorsports broadcasting from all across the nation and all across the world even, but especially up there in New England. When I had a chance to visit the New England Racing Museum where we got a tour from Dr. Dick Bergeron, Ken was talked about and Ken had plenty of memorabilia showcasing his legacy there at the New England Racing Museum. And I highly recommend it if you get a chance to go up there. Check out what they have regarding Ken Squire up there. And by all means, continue to offer up our prayers and condolences to Ken Squire and his family. On the subject of historic racing museums, I do have some more sad news to share that the Winston Cup Museum, which had announced back earlier this year that they would be reopening on Friday, September 1st, but would need to end up renaming their facility due to things with the RJ Reynolds and ITG Corporation brands not allowing them to use the Winston name for this museum. Unfortunately, they posted just today in quotes, History is hard to preserve and even harder to save. I am grateful I did my part for 19 years. Those were the words of Will Spencer, the Winston Cup Museum founder. Unfortunately, their press release today reads, The Winston Cup Museum to close December 16th, 2023. Over the past seven weeks, you all have provided us with some great renaming ideas, showed your support, and even given us quite a few chuckles along the way with your suggestions and creativity. We are forever grateful. The name that received the most votes was the Ralph Seagraves Memorial Museum, which we believe would be a great way 
to honor a man who was absolutely integral to the relationship between R.J. Reynolds Tobacco Company and NASCAR. However, after assessing the museum's current financial condition and the significant expense required to completely rebrand the museum, we have decided to close the brick and mortar version of the museum permanently on December 16th, 2023. This is not a decision we have come to lightly, but it is the necessary end of 19 wonderful years preserving racing history. The end of the brick and mortar museum does not mean an end to preserving great racing history and stories. So stay tuned to learn more about the future plans and how we will move forward into 2024. If you have not been to a museum before, this will be your last chance to see the collection we have amassed all under one roof and intact. So please come visit us at the Winston Cup Museum before December 16th. For those of you that are hardcore race fans and collectors, you will have the chance to own a part of racing history as we are auctioning off the mass majority of the collection with Mecom Auto Auctions in Kissimmee, Florida, January 2nd through January 4th, 2024. Join us there or online for what we believe will be a record-breaking day for the largest personal collection of racing memorabilia ever sold at auction. Most grateful, Will and Christy Spencer. Very sad to hear a historic racing museum is closing down, especially one that had been away for a little bit but was finally coming back onto its feet. Unfortunately though, things have just not been able to work out in the end. So, hate to see another racing museum shut down that I did not get a chance to go see, but if you get a chance to go see it, please go take advantage of every second of it and if you can buy anything for that auction, by all means, get some from the auction and, you know, preserve NASCAR history in your own way. Some junior motorsports news to share for you guys. Jarrett, who has been on the 8 car this past season of Josh Berry, which is a logistics and transportation company, they will actually now be on the number 7 car of Justin Allgaier next season for 6 races during the 2024 season. And I think their paint scheme looks really good. Designer Ryan Williams of JRM looks like he's nailed another one this year. In more Xfinity Series news, Kyle Weatherman has announced where he will be racing in 2024. He announced today that he is so excited and blessed to be full-time in a NASCAR Xfinity Series of DGM Racing in a 91, with Go Drive Smart as the primary sponsor for the 2024 season. Now, there's actually more to this that we need to discuss. As you may know, Josh Williams, famously known for the Park It situation in Atlanta earlier this year, he drove for the team in the 2023 season, and now his name is being floated around as potentially going to a surprising new home next year. So as we know, Colleg Racing is losing Chandler Smith, who is going to Joe Gibbs Racing. And they are also promoting Daniel Hemrick up to the Cup Series, replacing Justin Haley. Well, it's being reported that Ty Dillon will actually drive the other full-time Cup Series entry next year for Colleg Racing, meaning AJ Allmendinger is likely looking to go back down full-time to the Xfinity Series and in addition to AJ, he should be joined, according to many others, by Josh Williams driving full-time for Colleg Racing. That is the leading rumors of the rumor mill right now. And this announcement coming from Kyle Weatherman helps add into that. And finally, to end this episode, we're going to end it on a happy note because unfortunately we had some sad news to start. We're going to end on a happy note here. Happy himself, Kevin Harvick, has been rumored to have acquired a new property in North Carolina. If you recall, back a long time ago, it was announced that the house that Ricky Bobby lived in back in the Talladega Nights movie, well, it was up for sale. Kevin Harvick is reportedly the one who was purchasing this house, so Kevin Harvick has officially bought the Ricky Bobby house, allegedly. According to Adam Stern, it said Kevin Harvick bought Ricky Bobby's North Carolina mansion that was used in Talladega Nights for $6.75 million. And all I'm asking, Kevin, can we let Ryan Priest and Chase Briscoe borrow it for just a second? But that'll do it for Danny B Needs a Minute and our return episode. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope you guys have a great day. Subscribe to the channel if you're new, and we'll see you for the next one. Bye, guys.